Now, um, uh, one of the, um, okay, so uh, we're going to use a lot of linear space invariant system theory to describe imaging systems. Uh, so the reason we can do that is that they're well approximated by that. As I described, uh, when you have the lens, and then there's an aperture here, and there's a focal plane, this is, this is the Fourier domain, and this is the image domain. So, uh, so what will happen is that in the image domain, um, the, uh, the, the, the image here you should have, you should have, uh, would have liked to have uh, formed, uh, is say f of x, y, will be convolved with some point spread function, which we'll call h of uh, x, y, to produce the actual image, which is g of x, y. And the point spread function here will be h of x, y will be equal to the inverse Fourier transform. So it's the inverse discrete, oh, I'm sorry, continuous space Fourier transform of uh, h of uv, where h of uv is this aperture. Now, um, um, I'm, I'm, the things I'm saying here are not completely and precisely true because I'm mixing a few metaphors. What, what's happened is that this interpretation is precisely true if this is the electromagnetic field, but the images you usually form here are from the energy in the, uh, in the signal. But really, uh, using uh, the approximations of non-coherent integration of photons, it all kind of works out pretty much the same way. And what happens is the image you form on the focal plane array is the convolution of the, of the, uh, uh, of the image you should have formed with the point spread function of the system. And um, so basically, uh, if you take away the magnification factor, the resulting uh, image is like conv convolution of the uh, of the what the true image should have been with the point spread function of the imaging system. Now, um, so then uh, the point spread function is h of x y, and uh, and it's a continuous space Fourier transform is going to be h of u v, and uh, h of u v then characterizes the imaging system. Now, real imaging systems are not perfectly space invariant because as you uh, move around on the image plane, the point spread function for the system will be a little different. So, you know, one way you can actually measure this, and if you have a camera, you can actually go out and do this. Go out on a, on a starry evening, right, and take your camera, put it on a tripod, if you have a tripod, I've done this before, it's great fun. And look at some of the stars in the sky, because the stars in the side are almost perfect points. And then what will happen is you'll get, you'll get an image, and it'll have little points in it. And you can take that, put it onto your computer, and zoom in, and you'll see that when you zoom into that point, it's not really a point. It's sort of like a blur. It's a few pixels wide. And you can actually try it with different apertures. And you'll see that if you use a really, if you use like F, if you use f, I don't know, 16, if you use a really small aperture, the blur will get bigger, okay? If you use f, uh, uh, I don't know, 3, the blur will be smaller, at least if the camera is perfectly in focus. You have to set it to an infinity um, uh, focal distance. But uh, so this, this point spread function, so it's, you put essentially... You, you put a, a delta function, delta x, y, because the star is like a delta function. You put the delta function into this imaging system, and what you got out was you got the point spread function. 
So this is the point spread function. If you take the Fourier transform of that, that tells you what the frequency response of your 2D imaging system is. Now, often people don't worry too much about the phase, so they mostly focus in on the, um, on the magnitude of this thing. So you have, uh, so you have H of XY, that's the point spread function. It might look like, in a typical scenario, it might look like this. I'm really pretty bad at drawing these things. I'm trying to draw this thing in two dimensions, three dimensions. But anyway, and then it's, uh, it's continuous space Fourier transform will be H of UV. Now, if H of XY equals h of minus x minus y, then h of uv will be real. If not, it's going to be complex. So often people are interested more in, well, let's look at what the magnitude of h of uv looks like, and we'll normalize by h of 0, 0. So what's h of 0, 0? Everybody should know this. h of 0, 0 is equal to the integral of h of x, y, dx, dy. It's the area under the point spread function. So, um, so this is going to be normalized. And if you plot that, oh, this thing here is called the modulation transfer function. Or MTF. So if you plot the MTF, like in one day for instance, So this would be like along the u-axis. It'll be something like this, say. And you can look at the cutoff frequency. So the uh, units here are typically things like, uh, um, uh, this is uh, cycles per inch. And that tells you the number of cycles, uh, that tells you the, the frequency, uh, the highest frequency that your system control can, can pass. So you might have like the halfway point, you might have 3 dB down. 3 dB is the square root of 2 in, uh, uh, in these units. So, so this is how you often characterize the spatial resolution of an imaging system. Of course, if you have uh, a wider MTF, then you have higher resolution. If you have a narrower MTF, you have narrow, you have less resolution, and the point spread function is larger. So larger in the frequency domain corresponds to smaller in the space domain. Um, good. Okay, well, I think that's all the material we have to cover for this lecture. So, um, uh, we'll be, uh, uh, Seeing you uh, at the next lecture, and uh, thanks a lot. Bye.